fear and following. Fear and following are about, are what this passage from Luke today is about. We hear the disciples being struck scared by God's presence. The description of Jesus as dazzling in the NRSV is a rough attempt at saying that the glory of God present and revealed in Jesus during his earthly life is ineffable. It could not be really spoken or described and dazzling, how the NRSV puts it, is just an attempt. We hear about that from Moses, too, in the Exodus lesson today, that after he was with God, his face shone so brightly that the people needed him to wear a veil. That's how magnificent being with God, true God, is. In addition to being scared from being in the presence of God, Peter and James and John and the rest of the disciples are scared from Jesus' prediction that he had made just a week before this, that he would die in Jerusalem. Maybe they were scared, too, from Peter's profession that Jesus was the Christ. It's great to follow one of the messiahs running around in the first century of Palestine, but when you feel like you've found the real one, truly the real one, not one you can ditch for another one next week, that's probably scary, too. Especially when he says that he's going to die and come back to life. The disciples, Peter, James, and John, who've gone up the mountain to pray with him, might have been a little punchy, too. Thank you, Tiffany, for that insight at Bible study. That They are weighed down with sleep, and yet they stay awake. Their guard is down so they can see what truly happens when God's presence is manifest in Jesus. The fears that they have, both about God's presence and about Jesus' prediction, can't in the way, get in the way. And so because they are awake, they see Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Moses, who represents the law, which is why we heard that in the Exodus today. Elijah representing the whole of the prophets, God's greatest prophet. Jesus is talking with them to show Luke's readers, predominantly Jewish audience, that Jesus is at least on their level, that's an at least, but is the fulfillment and the continuation of the work of all of the law and the prophets. Jesus is the next chapter. He's more. He's God incarnate. And as Peter has professed a week before, he is God's chosen one. Through all of this, they're living in fear and they're directed to follow Jesus. I am very excited about what we're doing here at St. Hilda St. Patrick. And there is some fear lurking in the background. There's the fear of the world itself. What is the world coming to when the women's national team doesn't make it to the final? <laughs> In addition to the cares and occupations of our lives, we are behind on our pledges for this year. We have adopted a deficit budget at the annual meeting. There is anxiety about the future, generally speaking. And there's fear. Yet the disciples, 
in all of their fears, in all of their uncertainties and anxieties, hear God speaking to them. There's a cloud symbolizing the presence of God, being the presence of God, like Jesus' glowing face that comes around them. God, the clear actor in this passage, and the rest are side characters for God's activity. God is with them and speaks to the disciples, saying, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. This is the same statement, the same words that had been spoken at Jesus' baptism. The same words, the same statement that were spoken as Jesus began his public ministry. And now as Peter has professed that Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus has prophesied his death. And just after this passage, Jesus sets his face to Jerusalem We hear, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him, as Jesus begins and continues his ministry on behalf of the whole world, his departure at Jerusalem, as Moses and Elijah were discussing with him, his exodus. God telling the disciples to listen to Jesus is important because it's very easy or would be very easy for their fears to be what they listen to, to guide their decision making. Yes, he's going to Jerusalem to die. Listen to him. Death won't be the end. Jesus is the Messiah, the one who has finally come, but in a way you don't expect. Listen to him. Look at him, he is God transformed in a way that we can't even write down, really. Throughout this story that we hear from Luke, God is in control. In our fear and anxiety, God is in control, calling us to participate in God's reconciliation. At the end of the passage, we hear that they told no one then. How do we know about it then? After the resurrection, they remembered and started to understand a little more. The same way they remembered Jesus' prediction of his death and realized that it had been important to listen to him. Peter writes about it firsthand in the epistle reading today. So the disciples in all of their fear and anxiety, the disciples throughout all ages, are called by God to be calm. Because God is in control, especially when God shows God's self through majesty and through activities and visions that strike fear into us. We hear this story ourselves after the resurrection when the disciples are no longer as scared, certainly not by the transfiguration, and when they are talking about it, that the time for not talking has come to an end and it's time to tell others that God is in control that it will all work out, and to listen to Jesus. And even in our fear, we encounter the transfigured Christ, fully God and fully human. And in our fear, we hear God calling to us, saying to listen to Jesus and follow him in the way. Amen.